In a previous video, we saw that delocalization of electrons can help a compound be more stable, and we called that extra stability the delocalization energy. Let's look at a few specific types of compounds where we see this delocalization energy present. These compounds are known as dienes, the di meaning two and the enes referring to carbon-carbon double bonds. We'll introduce two different types of dienes. The first are isolated dienes, which have double bonds which are separated by more than one single bond. In this example, we see that the two double bonds are separated by two carbon-carbon single bonds. We can also have conjugated dienes, which have double bonds which are separated by exactly one single bond. In the second molecule, we see that there's two double bonds, and in between those, there's a carbon-carbon single bond. The pi electrons in the isolated dienes are localized, and so the isolated dienes have no special stability. However, the pi electrons in conjugated dienes are delocalized so that the conjugated dienes will be more stable. In this conjugated diene, we could move the pi electrons to the left which results in a negative charge on the first carbon from the left and a positive charge on the carbon all the way to the right. There's a pi bond now in between the second and third carbons. Alternatively, we can start with the pi bonds at the first and the third carbon and move the pi electrons to the right. In this case, we get another resonance form where the carbon on the left is a carbocation and the carbon all the way on the right is a carbanion or has a negative charge. In general, we find that allylic and benzylic cations are more stable than other primary cations due to electron delocalization. Allylic cations are those carbons that have a positive charge and are next to an sp2 carbon in an alkene. A benzylic cation is a carbon with a positive charge, and it's also next to an sp2 carbon in a benzene ring. Allylic carbocations are stable because the pi electrons can be donated to the carbocation. This shifts the carbon charge over a few carbons. Benzylic cations are also stable because the pi bonds in the benzene ring can be donated to the carbocation, resulting in a positive charge on the ring. Other pi electrons can be donated to move the positive charge to different positions around the ring, resulting in five different resonance contributing forms. We had previously discussed that tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary carbocations, which are in turn more stable than primary carbocations. Where do allylic and benzylic carbocations fall in the stability order? Although there are some exceptions, in general, tertiary benzylic and allylic carbocations will be the most stable. Secondary benzylic and allylic carbocations will be the next most stable, Tertiary carbocations will be next, primary benzylic, primary allylic, and secondary carbocations will all be about equally stable, and primary carbocations will be least stable. The presence of delocalized electrons can influence the products we get in a chemical reaction. In general, the stability of the carbocations with delocalized electrons will influence the products we get when we have addition to an alkene. In this example, we have a carbon-carbon double bond in between two carbons next to a benzene ring. If we do addition of hydrogen bromide to that alkene, we could end up with one of two products. 
we could have the bromine on the carbon next to the benzene ring, or we could have the hydrogen added to the carbon next to the benzene ring. In fact, we only get one product, and that's the product with the bromine on the carbon next to the benzene ring. If we look at the first step in the reaction, we see that the pi electrons are donated to the hydrogen, and the hydrogen bromide sigma electrons are donated to the bromine. This results in one of two carbocations. We could have a secondary benzylic carbocation, or we could have a secondary carbocation. As we saw in the previous slide, secondary benzylic carbocations are more stable, so that's the carbocation that will form in the first step of this mechanism. As a result, the hydrogen is added to the secondary carbon, and the bromine in the next step of the mechanism will be added to the benzylic carbocation so that the bromine ends up on the carbon next to the benzene ring. In general, we can see differences in isolated dienes and conjugated dienes, especially if we have a limited amount of hydrogen bromide or other hydrogen halide compounds present. For an isolated diene, if we have just one equivalent of hydrogen bromide present, it will add to the carbon-carbon double bond that results in the most stable carbocation. However, if we have a reaction with a conjugated diene and there's a limited amount of electrophile present, we'll get a combination of products. These are called 1,2 addition and 1,4 addition. In this reaction, we see that one pair of pi electrons are donated to the hydrogen, and that hydrogen will be added, in this case, to the carbon on the, all, on the end all the way to the left. This results in a carbocation that is in a secondary position. That carbocation in the secondary position can be stabilized by having the second pair of pi electrons be donated to the carbon-carbon bond in the middle, and that shifts the carbocation to the carbon all the way to the right. We now have two different carbocations for the bromide ion to add to. It can add to the secondary carbocation, or it could add to the primary carbocation. In fact, we will get some of both. Delocalized electrons can also affect the acidity of compounds. In effect, delocalized electrons can result in compounds with lower pKa values. We've previously learned that compounds will be more acidic if the anion formed from losing a hydrogen ion is more stable. For many organic compounds, Delocalization of electrons can stabilize the anions formed from losing a hydrogen ion. In particular, carboxylic acids are fairly acidic organic compounds, and they derive their acidity from the stability of the carboxylate ion that's formed, and this is a stable ion because the electrons can be delocalized. When we have a carboxylic acid, like acetic acid, it will lose the hydrogen ion bonded to one of the oxygens. Once it loses this hydrogen ion, we'll get the acetate ion. The acetate ion has a resonance form that can be obtained by moving one lone pair of electrons from the oxygen with a single bond to form a double bond to the carbon. That will then lead to one of the pi electrons in the carbon-oxygen double bond being donated to that oxygen. This will shift the negative charge from one oxygen to the other, and so we have delocalized electrons, and the carboxylate ion is very stable, 
and therefore the carboxylic acids will be fairly acidic organic compounds. On the other hand, we can also compare the acidity of two related but very different compounds. One is phenol, which has a hydroxyl group bonded to a benzene ring, or cyclohexanol, which is a cyclohexane with a hydroxyl group bonded to it. What we see is that phenol is much more acidic with a pKa of 10 compared to cyclohexanol, which is much less acidic with a pKa of 16. The acidity of phenol is derived from the stability of the phenolate ion, while the anion formed from loss of hydrogen and cyclohexanol does not have this stability.